Okay, let's go ahead and start section 3.7. This is going to be a major application uh, in, with derivatives. Uh, a lot of times with math books um, and how chapters are structured is the beginning and the middle of the chapter. They do all of the rules. They show you how everything works. And then towards the end, uh, they start throwing application problems at you and they want you to use what you just previously learned. So this is what we're doing. <clears throat> so now that we've tackled all of the derivative rules, uh, we can finally apply our skills to real life problems. Yay! With these problems, sometimes we have an equation in terms of more than one variable. Uh-oh. So we'll get to that in a minute. So first, let's start with some basics. So these related rate problems, they are a little different uh, in that all of the variables are some function of time or t. Uh, so let's review the notation for derivatives before we get into uh, these problems and how they actually work. So first, uh, what was the notation uh, for the derivative of y with respect to x? Well, that was dy dx. You could also use y prime. Um, but let's stick with this one right here, dy dx. So what would the derivative of y with respect to t be denoted as? Well, it's still the derivative of y, so that would still have to be the top. But the denominator is, since it's with respect to t, that would have to be dt. Okay, so what about the derivative of v with respect to t? So the derivative of v with respect to t, so dv dt. The derivative of h, so dh and it's still with respect to t, so dt. And the derivative of x, oh, so the derivative of x with respect to t, so dx dt. So the key to these problems is to remember that every variable is in terms of t, all of them. So whether you have v, h, a, B, C, D, all of them, they are all with, um, they are all in terms of T. So we are using, really using implicit differentiation with every single variable. So remember with implicit differentiation, that process was, was every time you took the derivative of a Y, you had to multiply by the dy dx. Well, now you're going to kind of broaden and generalize that to every single variable, but it's going to be with respect to t. So if you do the derivative of an x, you got to multiply by dx dt. The derivative of an h, multiply by dh dt, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we're going to, before we get into a real life problem, we're just going to kind of go with just a general function. So suppose x and y are both differentiable functions of t. Uh, and that x squared y minus 5x is equal to 12. So x and y are both in terms of t. We just don't know exactly what they are. So we're going to find dy dt uh, when x equals 3 and dx dt is equal to negative 6. So we got to first, if we want to solve for that, we got to first get it to show up, which means we got to find the derivative. So with this x squared y, I'm going to need to use the product rule. <clears throat> oh, actually, first let me back up. Um, we have x is equal to 3, but we don't know what the y itself actually equals. So let's plug in uh, x equals 3 into the function. So when x is equal to 3, because we might need a y value, so let's go ahead and get it. So plug in the 3 for the x. So you get 9y minus 15 is equal to 12, which gives us y is also equal to 3. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get the derivative starting with that product rule. Okay, so the derivative of x squared is 2x, and I just did the derivative of a variable with respect to t, so dx dt. Uh, times y plus now it switches so the derivative of y would be 1 times dy dt 
times your x squared. So let's see what it means. So it's every variable in terms of t. So you got to use implicit differentiation with every variable. So that every time you take the derivative of an x, a y, a j, a v, whatever it is, multiply by that d something over dt. Okay, so now the derivative of negative 5x would be negative 5 dx dt. And then the derivative of 12 would just be 0. And there you go. Okay, so you got to solve for dy dt. Well, there it is. Uh, when x is equal to 3, the dx dt is negative 6, and also the y is equal to 3. So we're going to start plugging in all of our numbers into here. So the only thing that should be left is that dy dt, and then we can solve for it. So plug in the 3 for x. Plug in the negative 6 for the dx dt. The 3 for the y. Uh, 1 is 1. Uh, plug in the 3 for the x. The dy dt stays where it is. And then the dx dt is negative 6 still. So now you have a whole bunch of numbers and the dy dt, now you can pretty much solve for it. So if you multiply all that out, you need negative 108 plus 9 dy dt plus 30 is equal to 0. So if you solve for dy dt, you're going to end up with 26 over 3. Okay, so what does this actually mean? Like dy dt is equal to 26 over 3. What exactly is that? Well, remember that derivatives are a rate. So the rate of change of the y's is changing at 26 over 3 uh, at the point 3, 3. So the x is changing at negative 6, so the x's are decreasing, but the y values are, are going up, they're increasing. All right, so let's stop the video here, and then we're going to get into some actual real-life type problems.